Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Bench Warmer Sports Podcast. I'm Rox Rapping, as always, joined by Davian and Anthony York. Boys, we are just weeks away. Or, boys, we are just very close to the college football season. I'm very excited as I do go to the University of Illinois. We're gonna, I'm going to watch our team get crushed constantly, but it's going to be fun because we get the. I'm excited because they play. I know they play Iowa, Purdue, Minnesota, Michigan State. A lot of good schools coming to Illinois. So definitely excited to watch those teams just tear us apart. I'm all for it. Let's go. Maybe I get to run the football field. We'll see. I look forward to that if that's happening. That's one of my dreams, if you guys were wondering. But, boys, how are you guys doing today? And then we'll just get right into it. I'm doing um, great. Um, you know, I'm coming into the show very happy. Just had a very um, – Nice football conversation with a couple of my close friends. Um, but a great space right now, so I'm excited for that to continue here. Uh, I, I don't know how I'm feeling. I'm feeling kind of dumbfounded because, I'm being honest, I don't know. I barely know anything about college football. So all of my takes here are just going to be, you know, it, they're going to be the best takes because they're not based off stuff. stats or analysis. It's just going to be – from my head, you know, it's just it's it's gonna be like the NCAA March Madness when I predicted Rutgers, Rutgers to go all the, the way. way. <laughs> all right, you know it it almost came to fruition. Okay, it just almost came, almost almost. Man, you why know? are you in a Rutgers shirt right now, Davy? And you're letting down your state. I I don't have a Rutgers shirt. I do have a Harvard shirt though, and I love Ryan Fitzpatrick, so that's why I'm wearing a Harvard shirt. So you know, you need more facial hair. You're truly a Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, fan. I know, I know. And then we have Theodore, who I don't know if that's a rack of weights, but Theodore was definitely getting a pump in before this podcast. Yeah. So we'll get right into the Ed Ogeron vibe. Obviously, he got fired by LSU. They brought in, they brought, <laughs> they brought in Brian Kelly with his uh, southern accent, his deep southern accent. But anyways, let's just get right into it. Obviously, we're going to go through the Power Five, and we're going to give our takes on who we think's going to win. Obviously, you have like the American and other conferences. I don't think that there's going to be a team like Cincinnati this upcoming year. I think Cincinnati's still going to be good. They lost. But I think they lost. They lost a lot of pieces. So that's my concern there. Notre Dame. I don't want to hear anything about Notre Dame. I will slander Notre Dame until they join a conference. I don't care about the NBC deal. I don't care about anything. Slander Notre Dame. I'm big anti Notre Dame fan. No, 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 no. I will fight the Irish. They're not fighting me. But anyways, let's just get right into it. We're going to start off with the bang to just start it off. SEC. I'm very excited about this. If you guys have been following the TikTok bench on Rose Tour Sports, you've seen a lot of my predictions for a lot of the higher teams in the SEC. And you would also know by watching that that my opinion is that the Georgia Bulldogs will win the SEC. They will go undefeated. I continue to hold that as of this day, August 15th. I still believe Georgia is going to win the SEC. Yes, you lost out on some pieces, but you still have great assets. And I think you still have Seston Bennett. And I really value having a quarterback who is has had a year in the system. I think quarterbacks having the next year, having experience in college football, having experience in the SEC, I think that's going to bode very well for Georgia. I have Georgia going through, going undefeated. I think they're going to be Alabama. It's going to be close. And if they lose to Alabama in the SEC championship game, I think Georgia is still going to do well, just like I did last year, regardless of what happens. All right. I think the champion of the Southeastern Conference will be Jimbo Fisher and the Texas A&M Aggies. No, no, no. who's playing no. quarterback? For We're gonna go eight and four. Cooling. It's Bama or Georgia. Flip a coin. I don't care. They're both be in the playoff. No, who's the quarterback? Bama. I'm sorry. Name, oh, maybe uh, the quarterback for Texas A&M. The what we're saying, guys. Alabama, all the way. Come on. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. No, you haven't answered my question. Who is the quarterback for Texas A&M? Uh, does anyone know? No. And that's question. the biggest problem with Texas A&M. They were really good last year, but I think they were very overrated this upcoming season. I think the preseason poll. Yeah. They're number as I pull it up, they're number seven, number six in the preseason poll. Yeah. There's no way. They might be yeah, a right? top 25 team. There's no way that they're competing with the likes of Alabama and Georgia this upcoming season. Roll Tide. I think, I think Kentucky's yeah. better. I think Tennessee is yeah. going to be better. Tennessee is like kind of like the we're back, Texas, we're back kind Roll of thing, but yeah. in the SEC, Florida is going to be better with Anthony Roll Richardson tie. finally Agreed. being the quarterback. AR-15. David, Roll is there tie. anything else you like? <laughs> but I just think it's very clear that Georgia, it's going to be Georgia and Alabama as the top two dogs. You're going to have a lot of variety of how Kentucky, how Florida, and other teams do. I just think Texas A&M, 
the quarterback is the most important position on for any football team. And we don't know who Texas A&M's quarterback is really going to be. There's going to be a quarterback battle. We're going to see what happens. But I just – I can't pick Texas A&M going and doing well if I if there's confusion about who's going to be the quarterback for the team. And you lose Charles Cross as well. Obviously, there's conflicts and the conflicting opinions on if he's going to be good in the NFL. But that's besides the point. You lose your left tackle too. I think yeah, never, they had their year last year. I think they're going to take a step back or something. No, yeah, I think they're nine and three and four, seven and five. They're basically locked into one of those spots. If you ask me, like they're always a good team who's just not good enough. And look, this is a conversation for a different day. But I'm going to briefly say this: when Texas joins the SEC, they will start stealing all of A&M's Texas recruits. Texas A&M is a program that's about to fall off in a huge way. Come back to this clip in five years. I I don't think anyone would dispute that clip or that take regardless because I think it's quite true. Let's we'll see what happens. Obviously, Texas A&M is always going to be little brother. But then again, we see MSU Michigan, and MSU's won a handful of those games over the past couple of years. Obviously, last year was a different story. But then again, that Michigan team was very, very good, led by Aiden Hutchinson. And with Michigan's defense being that good, it was able to cover the woes of Michigan's quarterback and offense. Texas A&M, they've had great defensive pieces in the past. I don't think their defense is good enough this year to mask those holes. And especially when the SEC is very, throughout the season, it's very defense heavy. Defense is very important if you want to go far in the SEC. But once you get into the SEC championship game, once you go further, it's all about the offense. Texas A&M does not have the offense to win those big games going down the stretch, in my personal opinion. But let's go on to the other school in Texas and their conference. Texas, horns down as always. You always need me to throw a horns down. If you, if I ever throw a horns up, it is because there's something wrong with me or I'm being kidnapped regardless. But let's just get right into it. Obviously, Oklahoma loses Lincoln Riley. They lose their quarterback, Caleb Williams. They lose a ton of pieces, all going to USC. I think OU is going to take a step back. I think as a whole, I'm concerned about the Big 12. I don't think they're going to have a team competing for the college football playoff. Obviously, a Baylor, who looked really good this past season. Oklahoma State was really good as well. I think one of those teams will go on to play each other in the Big 12, just like we got last year. And one of those teams will represent the Big 12. But I don't think any team in the Big 12 is going to be good enough. I will say, going back on my horns down statement, that B. John Robinson is an absolute dog. I have to say this. And if Texas is truly back, it's going to be on the back of B. John Robinson. I think he's really going to ball out. And if he plays well, it could be well enough. And we'll see what happens with Quinn Ewers as well. He grabbed his bag from Ohio State, took the year off from high school. Now he's going to Texas. If he plays well and he's worth the hype, I think Texas can have a really good year. But yeah. I keep hearing Texas is back, Texas is back. I want to see it first before I really pick them going anywhere. Aside from that, I think I'll just say Baylor. I'll just pick Baylor this year, winning the Big 12. I think it's a toss-up between Oklahoma State and Baylor. But once again, as I said prior, I don't think any team in the Big 12 is going to really be threatening for a the fourth or third spot in the college football playoff. The Big 12 is my personal favorite conference for college football. Like, I just, if I can only watch one conference in the regular season, it's going to be the Big 12. I think all these teams, uh, with the exception of uh, Kansas, are, generally speaking, competitive, can always capable of pulling an upset, always going to give you a fun game, even though there'll uh, probably be no defense. But, but I just think it's very fun football overall. Last year, Oklahoma State and Baylor were both just so close to making the playoff. And you know, Oklahoma State took out Baylor. They yeah, took, Baylor would have. You know, they make a good argument that Baylor would have gotten the fourth spot if they had scored on the one yard line. I think they had like numerous tries too. Yeah. If they had gotten that one yard, I think Baylor would have been the team representing. Or sorry, I think it was Oklahoma State that I think Baylor made the stand. Oklahoma State, but regardless, one team was one yard away from going. Yeah, it was Oklahoma State. Sorry, it was, Oklahoma yeah. State was one yard away from going to be in the college football playoff. But continue on, Theodore. A one-loss Big 12 champion has to be in, if you ask me. And Texas isn't there yet. It's not going to be them. Oklahoma, not going to be them either. I think um, they'll fall off, like you said. Oklahoma State and Baylor just have to avoid suffering that bad loss. Oklahoma State lost to Iowa State on on the last-second field goal, if I'm not mistaken, 
And, you know, if they'd been able to avoid that one bad outing they were in. Um, Baylor, I, I can't remember who Baylor lost to, but it was another um, game that they should have been able to pull through. Um, it's just, I really want to see one of these teams in. I really do believe that this these Big 12 teams are capable of making noise in the playoff. Then Baylor, it's Baylor, Oklahoma State. Like you said, they're two great teams um, up there with the best. Could be either. I'm just praying that one of them survives with only one loss. Yeah, Baylor lost to Oklahoma State early in the season. Yeah. And their other loss was to TCU 30-28 to back in early November. And TCU, again, as you mentioned, you kind of wrapped up the Big 12 very nicely where it's very competitive for the most part. But that also leads a lot of teams to cannibalize each other where you see all these upsets, which also takes out teams at the end of the day, too. So, although, as you say, like, I'd take a one-loss Big 12 team over a one-loss Pac-12 team. It depends who the loss is, obviously. Who knows what's going to happen in the college football season. But I agree with your assessment that Texas might be back at some point. I don't think it's going to be this year, but they will be back, I feel like, at some point in the near future, unfortunately. But, yeah, I think it's just going to be a toss-up between Baylor and OSU this upcoming season. I don't think either team is necessarily amazing or going to be off the charts. But, yeah, once I'm going Baylor right now. But great, you can, great teams. You can stay either team. Davian has the Baylor shirt. Are you going to stick to Yeah, no, and I got to say, it's between Baylor and uh, Oregon. That's that's my take. <laughs> Absolutely. So we'll see what happens in a few years when Oregon the Ducks goes have a very nice to join when the, when the Ducks move. from when, Once the Pac-12 dissolves, they will be joining the Big yeah. 12. And that is what Davian's alluding to. So when Oregon goes to the Big 12, just know that we called it first on this podcast. Yes. Moving on, let's just get into the conference that Oregon's currently in, the Conference of Champions or as I like to call it, the Conference of Not Champions, because when was the last time that, I mean, you had Marcus Mariota in 2014 with the Oregon Ducks, but aside from that, we have not seen a Pac-12 team in the college football playoff since then. That's the only time a Pac-12 team has made the college football playoff. This year, I still don't know what my fourth team is. I haven't known, I've been mulling over this for the past couple hours. I don't quite know yet. We'll figure it out once we get to the top four. I currently have Utah. I think their defense is very good. They've had Oregon's number in the past. Yes. Bo Nix is going to Oregon. That's going to be very interesting. But you lose Mario Cristobal. You lose some key pieces on the defense. I'm just not sure if I have faith in Oregon being as good as they were this past year. I think Oregon had a chance this past year and then just absolutely poo-pooed it away after losing to Utah. I think they lost like two or three times to Utah this past season. And I just absolutely just took them out. The Pac-12 is another fun conference in my eyes. Not that I'll ever watch any games because, you know, they're not on until 10 p.m. Eastern, which, story for another day. But um, I'm excited to see what happens here. Oregon, you know, Bo Nix, you know, he's out there. He's having fun. But losing Cristobal is going to kill that team. It's How- a retool reel. I feel like it's a retool, retool year yes. for Oregon where they're not going to be. It's kind of like Oklahoma, where Oklahoma is right now. Yeah, exactly. kind of where I see I could put Oregon in that same tier of teams. But then you also have USC who gains Caleb Williams, who gains Lincoln Riley. But you lose Drake London, who is now a member of the Atlanta Falcons, future Super Bowl champion. I don't know what year, but eventually I, I like to believe the Falcons will win a Super Bowl championship. Every but regardless, year. Getting, getting back into USC, though, my concern lies on the defense. They didn't really bring in anyone, any recruits, or anyone very special through the transfer portal either, where it's like, Okay, USC has improved defensively. Their offense was not bad this past season. I think it could have been better. But I see Caleb, Caleb Williams is going to help them. But the Pac-12 is a much more defensive kind of conference, defensive important conference than Lincoln the Big Riley's, 12 is. Yeah, Lincoln Riley's trying to play it like he's still in the Big 12. Right. And oh, I, sure. I think they have the offense to score up a lot of points. But then again, you have Utah's defense. You have very good defenses across the back 12 Oregon's defense is still going to be very good, but I'm just concerned about the offense of losing Mario Cristobal. So I still have Utah winning because I like that defense. I like the structure they have. It feels like every year Utah is always going to just be gunning for the top of the Pac-12 because they're very good at plugging in the next mm-hmm. guy. And they don't have, they don't tend to have that like one superstar caliber player who's just going to be a two and done kind of, kind of guy. They always just have, they always have the next guy off mentality. And I think Utah's going to win the Pac-12. 
I disagree. I think it will be USC. However, I just think that Utah and Oregon will combine to um, – the three teams will destroy any chances. Oregon will come in, pull an upset, probably over Utah if I had to guess. Um, USC, Lincoln Riley won't be good enough right away to avoid that one horrible loss. They'll fall somewhere, maybe to UCLA. Um, I'm fairly confident this conference won't produce a playoff team. David, you had the Ducks winning the Big 12. Do you have them winning the Pac-12 as well? I do. I very much do. Very That's nice. all I got to say. For, Thank you. The Ducks will win both 12s. The Pac-12 now kind of at some point should be called the Pac-10 again. But yeah. for another day, Theodore is praised earlier today. For another day. But we'll see what happens. Obviously, again, kind of like the Big 12, as you mentioned, Theodore, there's going to be some cannibalizing going on. I don't Rose. know why that's the word I'm choosing. But there's going to be a lot of teams that are just going to be very close to each other, which is a good thing because it makes for competitive games. But you're going to see a bunch of upsets, and you could see a scenario where I don't want this to happen, where Notre Dame could just be like, all right, let's just keep playing UNLV the whole year, and let's get into the playoff undefeated. Not that UNLV is a bad program. It's a very, very historic and growing program. I'm just saying that Notre Dame is just going to pick whatever team they can beat to go far in the playoffs. Although they do play back in Georgia. 15 minutes, Ralphie. Yeah. Moving on, though, let's get into my conference, the Big Ten. I'm very excited about this conference, as I mentioned prior, just going to football games, because that's going to be very fun. I love the vibe, although that the stadium at Illinois is essentially gone after the second, at the start of the second half. That's, that's I will say Nebraska fans do show up. I went to a game versus Nebraska. Those fans show up. Props to Nebraska fans. You guys are diehards. I don't know. I mean, you don't have much else to do in Nebraska, I feel like. But regardless, props to you guys. You guys show up. You guys are a very good traveling group. Obviously, you had Michigan go on their whole revenge tour this past season. I do not think they're going to do that this past year. I think you lost Aiden Hutchinson. You lost some key players on the defense. Like, no, sorry. No. He was on Georgia. Never mind. Pretend I, I started to say the safety who got taken by the Vikings. Anyways, Michigan. Not going to be as good as they were this past season. I have Ohio State, the Ohio State University winning the Big Ten. I don't think that's really no. too crazy of a take to have. I don't think anyone else is really going to come close. Concerned about Wisconsin, Iowa always will have a good defense. But the problem with Iowa is until they have a good enough offense, I don't think Iowa is going to take that next step and compete for a college football playoff spot. Rafi, I could not disagree more with just about every statement you made there. First of all, um, remember what you said about Notre Dame? Well, guess what they opened the season against? Ohio State, or the Ohio State, as they want you to say. The Ohio uh, State. Remember, yeah. Ohio State did lose to Oregon week one last year. Yeah. It's a game they fell short. Yes, the Big 12 champion Ducks pulled the upset. And uh, Oregon, I just want to mention, too, real quick, Oregon yeah. plays Georgia to start the season. So we're talking about Oregon, too. Oregon's going to go right with an 0 and 1 to start the season and they're already going to be No, you are really going to bank on, on Bennett. Bro, Bennett, bro. What, what's happening right after Bennett. week 1? Don't hate on Stetson Bennett. Come on. Stetson Bennett is Stetson not Bennett. amazing. Bennett. He's, he's, he had a flip phone. I don't think people talk about that enough. He had a flip phone in this society. That takes a lot of guts to do. Yes. I could not go a day with a flip phone. Theodore, continue on though with your big time ridiculous take that you're yes. trying to grasp. Notre Dame beats Ohio State week one. I fully believe that's going to happen. Now Ohio State has to run the table. And against all the good Big Ten teams they have to play, I don't think they can do it. They suffer two losses. They don't make the playoff. And then you get a battle out west. I really do believe this is the year for Iowa. I've said it in the past that I think they're one of the best programs in college football. This just, I don't know, call it a gut feeling, premonition, whatever. I really think this is the year they put it together. You know, they might, you know, they can afford a loss against Wisconsin, who another squad that'll be good. I just really, th first of all, I think the champion comes out of the West, whether it's Iowa or Wisconsin. Really strong feeling that it's a one loss Iowa Hawkeyes team that wins the Big Ten. Call me a madman. You are a madman. Well, you're not a bad man. I respect it. I, I would go good. You already hear from Damian Corso. The Hawkeyes <laughs> will go far this year. Hawkeyes. I disagree with that take, but 
we'll see what happens. That's the fun of these predictions, though. We get to look back and just laugh at how ridiculous the North takes are. If you I haven't just, watched the, NFL video, have the, Bengals, the NFL video, the video is live, so if you do want to get laugh at some point while you're watching, while you're going through the NFL season, be sure to watch that because the North has some great lines. And they're just hilarious. It's a whole comedy skit. So you're really going to enjoy that, and hopefully you come to this episode as well and watch some of uh, the North's other ridiculous takes. Now moving on to the conference where I have the hottest take, the ACC, the American Coastal Conference, I believe it's called. I have Miami winning. You bring in Mario Cristobal. I think that they have the pieces in place to potentially shock a lot of people and go on to win the ACC. Clemson, I'm concerned about DJ Ungalele. He was not that good this past season. I think Clemson is still going to be very good. I think that Miami is going to beat them, though. That's kind of just all I have to say. I kind of want to agree with you. I think the U could be back. I'm really high on Crystal Ball. Um, I just I've also heard very good th- Tyler Van Dyke. I've heard very good things about him also entering this upcoming season about him being a a mid first rounder currently and potentially going up higher in the board. And I know that doesn't matter because we all saw what happened with Sam Howell and essentially every part. Sam hmm. Rattler was a great example of just absolutely falling off the map, falling right to you. USC and not the good USC, the University of South Carolina. But we saw the quarterback just fall completely. Yeah. But continue with your point. I um <clears throat> up until last week, I was going to be that guy who came out of nowhere and said that Sam Hartman was going to lead Wake Forest to the ACC championship. Sad to see what happened there. Um, I was really high on the Deacons. Uh, that's obviously not going. They're not a threat without Hartman. If we're being real. Um, I really, it's between Clemson and Miami. There's no team in this conference that jumps out at me. I really think that this conference may be the worst out of the Power Five this season, worse than the Pac-12, if you ask me. And, you know, for Clemson and Miami, it's just about avoiding a bad loss, you know. Get to the conference championship game with one loss, try to win it, and you're in. That's all it really takes. I just don't think either team's strong enough to do that. I think I've heard a lot of stuff about NC State potentially playing spoiler. I don't have them winning the ACC, but if you if you wanted to bet on a team pulling off an upset at any point over Miami or Clemson, I think NC State is your team to go to. Davian Rutgers, I believe, was once in the ACC. No, they were in the Big East, I believe. Big Regardless, East. Rutgers is close to a lot of the teams in the ACC. Does Rutgers win the ACC because of that? No, 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 because you can't do that. Can't because in the Big going Ten, to Oregon, Oregon is back. It's only Oregon can do that, okay? Only Oregon. No. Only Oregon, okay? Only the Mighty Ducks, okay? I, I'm, I'm, I'm selling. I'm showing fake propaganda. I'm, I'm talking fake propaganda. Come Oregon on. is only in one conference. You heard it here first. Don't stop. Stop with this ridiculous. We're getting shadow banned for saying that. <laughs> don't listen to the fake news out there. There's only one conference at Oregon. But, Davion, who's your pick? Um, Clemson. Very Thank nice. you. Also, guys, let me say, and th- there are very few programs that I've um, slandered more in the past than Florida State. Florida State can pull an upset this year. I don't think they're a great no, team. No. Wrong. I just think a Wrong. school that big is due no. to get lucky once in a while. No. There's no luck. They're not going to be a good team. I really think they'll go into Clemson, possibly. No. Stop. Moving on to our top four, we're just going to get into the college football playoff before we let the or talk about more ridiculousness. If Wait, you're we wondering, did, did we cover the Big Ten? Yeah, we did do the God. Big Ten. What? Oh, I was going to – oh, man, okay. I was going to go on a whole – Sorry, Damien, who do you have winning the Big Ten? It's going to be Rutgers. Rutgers. Like, come on, guys. There we, <laughs> there we go. I'm not shocked at all. But anyways, let's get into the top four. I have in – I guess we'll go in, in order. I have the University of Georgia being the one seed once again. I have Ohio State – the Ohio State University being the second seed in the college football playoff. Number three, I have the University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa. Oh, my goodness. I've seen so many stuff online. I'm trying to figure out the – Roll Tide. Algorithm, but all I'm seeing is Alabama rushed it. 
I don't care who Skyland's going to. I don't care where she's going. I haven't seen people to go in this crazy about a girl and recruiting since. I mean, I haven't heard this kind of recruitment stuff going on and this much coverage since Arch Manning and his whole ordeal going to Texas. My goodness, you go on TikTok. There's a whole thing about this girl and where she's going to get accepted into. I don't care. Don't care. I'm so glad I'm getting off. Whole thing. Number four, I have the Utah Utes. No. No. What? What? I have the Utah Utes. No, look, I think we covered that pretty nicely in the Pac-12. I thought we would reach a consensus that they were just all going to destroy each other. That's what's going to happen in the Big 12, too. That's what's going to happen. I, that's going to happen in the ACC. I don't think any team in the ACC is going to win. Yeah. I, I just don't like any. I really don't know. This year, I think especially – we can really just pencil in whoever is the four seed as they lost entering the college football playoffs. Agreed. I don't think we'll see what happens. I hope there's a, I hope there's a team that comes out of nowhere that's just that just falls out. But right now, I mean, look at Michigan this past season. No one at Michigan going. They were not ranked to enter the season, yeah. and they won. So there there could be a surprise team that comes in. And yes. I hope there is because I don't know who's going to be the four seed, and I really think that whoever is the four seed is just. Let me play the winner of Georgia Alabama in the SEC championship game, and let me get absolutely smacked. But hey, we're gonna make a lot of money in the process. You guys want to hear a dark horse team? USC, USC, Oregon, UCF, yeah. Mississippi State. Mike Leach is is finally in a click for him. He was he is the most fun coach in all of college football. Will Rogers is a solid QB. I don't think they're gonna be anything special, but. If a team's going to put it together this year and put together, like, a two-loss season, it's going to be Mississippi State. It'd be Rutgers, but yeah. All right. If we're doing our top four, though, Bama and Georgia are in. I think Bama will be the one seed. Um, just a guess, really. There's it's so hard to you know, separate these teams right now. Um, yeah, I have Ohio State missing, as I said earlier. Iowa coming in from the Big Ten. Could easily be Wisconsin, though. Um, and then my fourth team is going to be Notre Dame. No. <laughs> You keep oh. saying, you keep making jokes about their schedule. They open the season at Ohio State. They're going to lose to Ohio State. They, They're going they to travel. lose to Clemson. They're going to lose to USC. They're not going to be good this year. And even if they somehow are good, they're not getting in. They have know, we're not having any of this. Incredible marquee matchups. I and they're losing at they're least three of, them. three of them and be in. Notre Dame to the college football playoff. No. Yes. And if – all right, and they could fall short. Um, I think – look, Oklahoma State and Baylor, I think they'll destroy each other. I think any hope of a second, you know, one loss, Big Ten team that misses the championship as has happened in the past won't fall into fruition. The Pac-12 will destroy each other. There are going to be a lot of really good teams that miss. It's why we need a 12-team playoff. But since we don't have it, Notre Dame gets in. Wrong. No. No. Dave in? Uh, Bama, Georgia, Michigan, Oregon. Thank you. We'll see what happens. Obviously, there's a lot of time. And once again, Theodore, don't worry. As we get into the season, you can definitely change your picks as we go along. But we hope you enjoyed this college football preview (laughs) episode. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you get all the notifications and you can watch all of our videos. You also get a cookie if you subscribe, a virtual cookie as well. Not a, I, I don't think it would be beneficial if I sent you a cookie from Illinois to wherever you are. But regardless, you get a cookie and be sure to follow us on TikTok, Bench from Rutgers Sports. You get to see more of Theodore's ridiculous takes. You get to see a bunch of great memes. And you get to see, once again, as we advertise with their NFC video, you can see the slow progression to madness that Theodore will go into as a New York Giants fan. It's already begun. So you can also see sure Dave's IP address. Yeah, 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 you can see that too. That is well if you yeah. are enjoying that, that kind of stuff as well. And once again, we hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure if you're in the fantasy league, we're very excited to get this thing all kicked off and running. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, that's all for this one. We hope you enjoyed, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Go Tigers. Roll Tide.